Thank you. Uh, today I want to share my recent joint work. This work was done when I and uh, Chen Haochang, the last author, when we were visiting Nick Griffin and uh, Ping Yan Lu in Shanghai University of Finance and uh, Economics. Consider the classic uh, knapsack problem here. There is a buyer with a certain amount of budget, and he is facing n different items. Each item is specified by its value for the buyer, CVI, and its cost, CI. The target of the buyer is to purchase a bundle of the items, such that the total cost of the purchased items is at most the budget, and he wants to maximize the total valuation from the purchased items. However, in, in a very practical and uh, typical scenario, possible, each item is uh, provided by a selfish seller and uh, possibly the costs of the items are all private information. Under these assumptions, uh, possibly the buyer cannot purchase a bundle as good as in the original idealized knapsack model. So he needs some gold mechanism to guarantee a large enough valuation in any case. Actually, this is exactly the, exactly the budget feasible mechanism model considered by Singer in his 2010 paper. The input to a budget feasible mechanism oh, sorry, is almost the same as the original knapsack problem except that uh, the costs of the items uh, are replaced uh, by the bids from the sellers. The output uh, of, the prop of the mechanism consists of two parts, the allocation and the payment. If we consider determin deterministic mechan mechanisms only, each x, uh, x allocation is an n-dimensional factor, each entry is either 0 or 1, meaning whether or not uh, the buyer purchases uh, item i, if we also also consider randomized mechanisms, xi can also be a random a fractional number between zero and one, meaning the selling the purchase prob probability. The payment is a n-dimensional factor. Each entry means the payment to each item. In our previous work as well as our paper, a mechanism must satisfy these three assumptions, uh, the three properties. First, uh, of course, in any case, the total payment uh, to the purchased items is at most the budget. Second, uh, a mechanism must be individually rational. That is, a mechanism must uh, attract uh, the sellers uh, to uh, participate in. In any case, uh, whenever a seller uh, decides to join in the mechanism, he always gain a non-negative utility. Here, the utility is defined as the difference between the payment to him and the cost of his item. Finally, a mechanism must be truthful. In any case, the seller always get his utility maximized by bidding the true cost, regardless of the other people's bids. Okay, to get familiar with the model, let's look at uh, a concrete example to see that uh, in some cases, the mechanism can never get a utility evaluation as good as the knapsack optimum. Uh, suppose the seller has a unit of budget and he is facing two items. Uh, the first item has a value of two and a cost of two, one, zero. The second item has a unit value and a unit cost. It's easy to say that uh, in the original knapsack problem, the, the buyer can purchase uh, both the, the both items and get a value of three. However, you see, the first uh, seller noticed that even if he uh, claim a larger bid, a larger cost, he still get his item sold out because his item has a larger value than the second item. So. Actually, he will bid a cost of one. In other words, in any mechanism, the buyer has no way but to purchase the first item and pay a payment, uh, pay a money or a unit of money. So our mechanism can only get a valuation of two. This simple example naturally introduced introduce our problem. 
we want to start a uh, uh, valuation guarantee of our mechanism. That is, uh, the approximation ratio, the ratio between the valuation of the knapsack optimum and the valuation generated by our mechanism. And we consider worst case analysis uh, of all possible uh, instances. Uh, these tables uh, summarize uh, our previous work on the budget feasible mechanism design. And uh, we, uh, in, in our work, we concentrate on the ba most basic uh, knapsack setting, where the, sell where the buyer has additive valuations. For in this setting, the, these two tables uh, summarize uh, our, our previous and our new results. If we only consider deterministic mechanism, uh, in Singer's original paper, he proved a low bound of two, and uh, he designed a five approximation uh, mechanism. Later, in, this, in the 2011 papers, the low bound is improved to 2.41, and the up bound is improved to 3.41. And in our mechanism, we first designed a three approximation improved uh, uh, mechanism, improved the previous work. If we also consider randomized mechanisms, uh, the perform, uh, we can get a better valuation guarantee. In the 2011 paper, uh, they showed that uh, no randomized mechanism can have a performance, uh, we can have a ratio strictly better than two, and they designed a three approximation mechanism. Finally, in our work, uh, we close this gap, uh, propose an uh, optimal an optimal two approximation mechanism. Okay, in the rest of the talk, uh, I will give the high level ideas uh, behind our mechanism. Actually, we propose uh, a two stage mechanism design framework. The first stage is called the pruning, and the second stage is called the posted pricing. Uh, in the first uh, pruning stage, we gradually remove the items uh, with uh, lower value, uh, value per cost ratios until certain condition. Uh, when I must uh, emphasize that uh, the idea behind the pruning is, was also used in the in Singer's paper and the 2011 paper. But uh, in our paper, we choose uh, the stop condition more carefully. Uh, I will specify the stop condition soon after. But uh, at this moment, uh, let's denote uh, by S the remaining items and uh, denote by R the uh, except uh, value per cost ratio. In the second uh, stage, posted the pricing stage, we simply partition the budget into some sub budgets. And uh, for each remaining item I, we purchase it if and only if yeah, the budget allocated to it is more than the cost of it. Okay. Let me give more details about the prawning stage. Recall that in this stage, we remove the items with lower value cost ratios. So a very natural and intuitive uh, in, uh, intuitive stop condition is uh, maybe we stop just once the remaining items become budget feasible at the current ratio. But uh, actually, if we choose this stop condition, our mechanism may have a arbitrarily bad valuation guarantee. To, uh, to say so, let's look at a concrete example. Suppose the buyer has a unit of budget and he is facing two items. The first item has a value of two epsilon and a cost of epsilon. So this means a ratio of two. And the second item has a unit of value and a unit of cost. So a value of cost ratio of one. You see, if, uh, of course, uh, idealistically, the buyer wants to purchase the both items, but uh, you see, yeah, uh, the, the combination of the two items is not budget feasible at the ratio of one. In other words, the buyer has no way but to remove the second item since it has a lower ratio than the first item. However, after doing so, our mechanism can only choose the first item, so one with, uh, uh, with larger ratio, and uh, get a value of two epsilon. But uh, in the original knapsack problem, the buyer can purchase the second item and get a value of one. So the ratio one over two epsilon can be absolutely large. 
Based on this example, we notice that, uh, okay, we must modify the stop condition. And the idea is, uh, into, uh, is uh, quite simple. We just uh, stop uh, the removal process one step in advance. That is, we stop, we terminate uh, the removal process just before the remaining items become budget feasible. Actually, say, by choosing this uh, stop condition, we can get another useful fact. We can get an upfront on the knapsack federation. You see, this, uh, this upfront is, this formula is uh, quite intuitive if the remaining items have larger value, values. Uh, of course, the knapsack federation is also large. On the other hand, if the remaining items uh, have larger costs, likely the knapsack valuation is small. Okay, next uh, let me give more details uh, about uh, the second posted pricing uh, uh, stage and uh, explain how to combine the fact that we have just uh, obtained and the posted pricing together to establish the valuation guarantee of our mechanism. Recall that uh, in the posted pricing stage, uh, we simply partition the budget uh, into some sub budgets and uh, only purchase the budget feasible items. So for each uh, remaining item I, of course, uh, there are two possibilities. First, if the item is budget feasible, then of course our mechanism purchase it, uh, I mean choose it as a winning item. This means a better outcome of our mechanism and, of course, a better valuation guarantee. On the other hand, uh, even if the item is not budget feasible, okay, also our mechanism cannot choose this item as a winning item, but we also notice that the cost of this item is more than the sub-budget allocated to it. So by using the fact in the above, we can get a better estimation of the knapsack of valuation. So in any case, we either have a better outcome of our mechanism or a better estimation of the knapsack valuation. And combining all these observations together, we can establish the claimed valuation guarantee. That is, uh, in our deterministic mechanism, we carefully construct the posted prices, and uh, its performance is a uh, three approximation. In our randomized mechanism, we choose the randomized uh, posted prices, and that is, uh, we carefully construct the distribution of the posted prices, and uh, this means a better performance, and uh, the randomized mechanism can achieve two approximation. Okay, in the research uh, program of budget mechanism design, there are still many interesting qu open questions remain open. Notice that uh, uh, in, in these settings, uh, the problems uh, can be are conduct the results are conducted uh, in terms of valuation uh, hierarchy. We consider, in our work, we consider the additive valuation and in the broader submodular XOS or subadditive settings, many questions remain open and uh, so, I mean the lower bound, the, state, the best no lower bound does not match with the best upper bound and uh, even in some settings, uh, the constant, any mechanism with the constant approximation is still unknown. So. Uh, it's an uh, uh, interesting direction to explore these uh, questions in the future. That's all.